Welcome, listeners, to the True That's a Good Card series. Today, my wonderful co-host Kyle will have the challenge of getting me to say that's a good card. While Kyle will be doing the convincing, I'll be playing devil's advocate. Also, make sure you stay tuned for our That's a Good Card question mark segment at the end of the podcast for some extra fun. All right, Kyle, let's get started. Sweet. Thanks for the introduction, y'all. So today we got a fun one, ladies and gentlemen. This might be one of the most fringe (laughs) of all the cards that we've brought so far. Maybe not in a sense that I think people will know what this card is, but maybe not (laughs) for the CEDH community. Uh, So I'll just go ahead and say it. Our card today that I'm bringing to the table is Manifold Key. Now, Manifold Key is a one cost, one generic cost artifact. And it has two abilities. The first ability, you may pay one and tap it to untap another target artifact. And then the second ability is that you may pay three and then tap it. And it says target creature can't be blocked this turn. Now, yeah, have you heard of Manifold Key before? Uh, Yes, I've seen you play it quite a bit. And I uh, don't think I've actually really considered it before you brought it up to me uh, for this episode. Yeah, so it is a a long-standing staple for a lot of uh, casual artifact decks or high-powered artifact decks or really artifact decks in general. If you have played the artifact trope before, you've probably heard and play Manifold Key. Now, on the flip side of that, if you're a CEDH player, you probably haven't seen it in a lot of (laughs) CEDH decks. Maybe if you've been playing against, you know, what what spiked this this love for Manifold Key, which is uh, the new Gandalf the White card. If you've played against that version of CEDH Gandalf the White, maybe you've seen Manifold Key. But realistically, uh, you're not seeing it in a lot of standard CEDH deck lists, at least not ones that are uh, competing at a high level in tournament play, right? Um, Yeah. But that kind of leads into, you know, how I got uh, onto this card in the first place and now i'm trying to argue not only is is this card good in artifact based decks in cedh like gandalf but just in like decks in general uh in many decks and i'll kind of get into which decks i think that manifold key are good in so what got me into this card originally was my gandalf the white deck and in my gandalf the white deck it is super artifact heavy because gandalf basically gives all artifacts flash right so gandalf reads it has flash and And it says, you may cast legendary spells and artifact spells as though they had flash. And then the second part of Gandalf says, if a legendary permanent or artifact entering or leaving the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So the reason why Manifold Key is so good in this deck is because, well, first of all, I'm playing like 40 artifacts or more, 40 or more artifacts in this deck. That's a lot of Um, And Manifold Key... Yeah, and Manifold Key just enables all of these artifacts that, generally speaking, have a some sort of tap activation. Uh, Manifold Key lets you untap those artifacts so you can do it again. Notably, because Manifold Key is an artifact, it doesn't get summoning sickness, so the second that you play it for one, you can immediately benefit from its uh, abilities right away, which is great. So, let's get into my very first point of why Manifold Key is a good card. And the first point I have is that it works excellent in conjunction with rock heavy decks now uh, i will just point it out there right now if you are playing an artifact hate deck in cedh or some sort of anti-artifact stacks do not play this card that's a a (laughs) no-brainer but if you're playing in some lists that basically if you run mana vault and mana crypt and especially if you run mana vault mana crypt and grim monolith this card is awesome it yeah. not only acts as a, another, basically another rock for you, but it also has versatility in it. So um, for anyone, uh, you know, asking the question of why is this so good, let's say you play a Mana Vault uh, for one cost on your turn, right? Um, you can then tap that Mana Vault for three colorless mana. You can use one of that colorless mana to play this Manifold Key, and then you may activate the Manifold Key for one of those floating colorless mana, to untap the mana vault and you can tap it again and now you have four colorless mana at your disposal and granted for that you only had to have one mana available 
So it works really well with mana rocks in general, and especially those like Mana Vault where they don't normally untap in your untap phase. Now this also is the same for Grim Monolith where both Mana Vault and Grim Monolith don't untap in your untap phase. So by having a Manifold key, you can kind of get around the downside of those cards by being able to untap instead of paying a cost of, of four, you can pay a cost of one. one effectively yeah, it's a to pretty big deal yeah it's it's a huge deal um now not only that but it also works the same not as effective but the same with mana crypt and soul ring right so if you're creating multiple mana with a rock you can untap those rocks with manifold key uh to add another extra so on its own essentially it's its own mana rock and that's just the base effectiveness of this card in most cedh decks and i think yep you can easily make the argument that most CDH decks these days are running Mana Vault, Mana Crypt, Mana Crypt. and Soul Ring, right? Yeah. Mm, a lot don't run Grim Monolith, and I understand why, but for the most part, you can say those big three are run in almost every CEDH deck. Those are really good points. Um, I think that the... I was actually, when I was doing some research for this card, I was actually kind of wondering, like, why don't I run this in Kinnon? And then I really thought about it, and it was like, oh, yeah, because Kinnon takes care of himself, right? Like, Kinnon produces so yeah. much that it <laughs> almost doesn't matter because I was thinking, like, oh, um, to your point, right? Like, I could... I run a lot of mana rocks in Kinnon, and um, it would be really great to kind of untap things uh, each time, but Kinnon has such a tight amount of cards that it wants to use in its deck that like this thing is good but it doesn't quite make the cut it, you know it's, i might if, be able to sway you that by the end of this because i think find that kinnon actually is a deck kinnon is a deck that i think this manifold key could work on so and that, you know I'll, I'll come back we'll we'll route back to kinnon after i get to my third example here or my third point as to why it's so good but cool i'll get into my second point now so not only is it good with mana rocks that's point one point two is <laughs> is its own category in itself but it it untaps the one ring right yeah that's huge so the one ring is so that dominant is We've that said is this a big deal i think literally every podcast that we have had we have mentioned the one ring and how dominant it is in this format right now manifold key untaps the one ring so you get two activations of the one ring for one mana yeah, and that good. manifold key it keeps going, right? So you can get however many activations as the game goes long. So I really do think that this deserves its own point just by saying, hey, I have something that untaps the one ring. And, you know, someone pointed out to me when I was talking about how I, I was going to bring Manifold Key to the table, somebody brought up to me that they've seen the keys. So the other key in, in mind that a lot of other people there talk about is Manifold Key is the number one, but then you also see Voltaic Key. That's right. Which is the same thing, except yeah. for Voltaic Key can technically target itself. Oh, yeah. So that's the only difference. So it doesn't say another, it, it can untap itself. And Voltaic Key notably doesn't have the second act activated part which is target creature can't be blocked in this turn so i think that in the cedh format i think manifold key is strictly better just because i'm not using it necessarily for the loops that you can get from having multiple voltaic keys and untapping voltaic key with itself i'm not going for that with this yeah. card i'm going for pure value with this card which is why i think manifold key is better um but anyway back to the point if you get an early one ring you probably got there using a mana vault a mana crypt or a soul ring right yep so not only yeah most likely you got there with that right i don't think that you're you know in in a, in a real cedh game you're probably not getting an early quote unquote early one ring by playing land pass land pass land pass land pass okay turn four i play one ring right <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> if that's your cdh maybe. game plan i think you're in trouble <laughs> <laughs> so so this kind of has that caveat where this this point kind of trickles in with the first point which is if you have one ring out you probably have something else that can benefit from from being untapped as well right so even if you don't i mean i, I don't see really see a world where you know you're not going to probably want to use it to draw cards but you never know you could draw a card into a combo and you're like oh my gosh i need you know that extra little bit of mana to do my combo and win the game perfect right um so i, I think it's a safe assumption that if you have a one ring out you probably have another artifact that got you there so not only does it let you draw more cards every turn but it also just it, it has a good flow with another card that have, has gotten you to that point right and i don't i i truly believe that right now like, I would love to see a list that's competitive in CDH that doesn't run the one ring. 
I don't know when the last time I've seen a list that doesn't have it. Do you know any? I Off the top of your head? think of any w- list right now that wouldn't find a spot for the One Ring. I yeah. would be really Maybe surprised. Maybe a super turbo list? I don't know. I don't know. But I think even Rog Size <sighs> play it, so I don't know. Card draw is just good, so <laughs> I would be really good. surprised. I would be really surprised. Good. Um, they, yeah, so yeah, so that's my second point. I, I I don't know if you have any sort of rebuttal for that. I I, I don't think no, it's, that, it's, that I can't. You can't uh, rebut that. That that one that was yeah, like yeah. <laughs> that, that's a pretty key point for your argument. I think. Yeah, I, it's probably the best point um, for the format currently as it stands. Uh, cool. So I'll get into my third point. My third point actually revolves around the new or the second activation of this card, the second activated ability. Uh, and the second activated ability, once again, you pay three colorless and tap it to activate the ability that says target creature can't be blocked this turn. Right? So yep. you're targeting a creature and it can't be blocked. And I think that it's pretty powerful as just a little side cantrip ability um, for something that's already going to be on your board to help you ramp or help you activate your one ring i like having the ability to make especially in a deck like I'm, i mean i use this example all the time because you know i, I made the deck i have probably 50 games in the last two months on this <laughs> on Corvold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, especially for a deck like Corvold, which checks all these boxes where I'm playing heavy mana rocks, I am playing one ring. And now I have this massive commander that I, I do not want to be blocked by some tiny birds of paradise. Or, you know, I played a game recently or semi recently, maybe a couple months ago <laughs> where I had a 20. 20- 323 Corvold, and I was blocked by some Yuriko player who had a Mausoleum Wanderer, a 1 1 flying little little uh, centipede looking thing. looking ass <laughs> thing <laughs> that was able to just, just chump block this 2323 Corvold. Yep. Um, so having a manifold key in that situation would mean that that 2323 Corvold is lethal, right? Yep. Yep, um, yep. Same goes for Obnixilis, same goes for a really pumped up Kenrith it can be really valuable to get um, damage through on your opponents. Most notably, I think someone was talking to me recently about how they feel like Adnaz is falling out of flavor, but I've seen quite a few Adnaz decks recently where people should be swinging at these players. Like I, I feel like people are so in this Rhystic Pass meta of mid-range hell that they're starting to forget that some players just play Adnaz and can win the game and that their life total is effectively card draw. Like Corvold. Um, so... Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're still seeing people play Adnaz. It's still one of the best cards in the format. Manifold Key lets you punish these Adnaz players. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think that that part is pretty cool because um, this is actually a little bit less... Well, I guess like, when you add in the uh, mana value of the card, it's about the same as playing a Rogue's Passage, but like nobody re- plays Rogue's Passage in as a land. Uh, Rogue's Passage is a utility land that taps for a colorless, and it has the same ability that Manifold Key does, but it is four cost to tap and have target creature uh, be unblockable till the end of turn. So this is kind of cool because for one land, less every time you want to activate it it does the same thing and that's pretty cool rook's passage is found in a lot of pre-cons i probably have like four or five copies from yeah all i the think different... i have like 12 of them yeah <laughs> and i run it <laughs> and, never and, yeah. never never in... not in cdh not in cdh in casual it's cool it can be fun you know but but yeah i think manifold key is strictly better than rogue's passage um especially since you know it only taps for colorless and you don't want that land in your starting hand in cedh right yeah uh, you want to be able to play your spells with the colored pips so cool that's my third point and then the last point is a little spicy point yeah i got i'm bringing a spicy point i like to this the point table I, I like this that, point that yeah. i think is kind of funny which is that manifold key is a politicking tool yep a hundred percent through and through. So you you can target someone else's creature, not on your turn. So you can make, you know, if you're playing seat one and seat two is like, hey, I need to attack seat four. Like I, he's low. I need to get through on him. You can say, dude, I can make your big 2121 Obnixilis unblockable. And dude in seat four who's presenting a win next turn can do nothing about it. Right. 
And not only that, like, so, so sure, it can help you, you know, take a player out from the game and give yourself a better chance of winning the game. But also you can use it in the first place as a politicking tool. Say, hey, I, if you don't attack me, I'll make yours unblockable. You can go attack the other guy, you know? I think that that's, that's an important aspect of this card as well, especially for those players who play CEDH and are good at politicking, right? Uh, there's definitely some people I've played against who are much better at politicking and really lean into the politicking to their advantage. And for those kind of players, I think Manifold Key is kind of right up your alley. No, I, I completely agree. I think that CEDH is very much a, a social politicking type of game. Like if you're not doing it that way, then, um, you know, teach me because I think that I've definitely talked myself out of dying um, multiple times and won games that I probably shouldn't have basically because I was able to point out key things at a key moment and uh, d convince people that I was able to help. And I did. I made sure that the other person didn't win, but my turn came around and I was able to win. And I actually was um, I looked at this and I thought of all the games that I've had where somebody we were again in that like end game state and somebody was like I could stop but I'm tapped out like I wish like can somebody untap something like a land like a I just need a blue pip uh, some kind of mana rock that True. could yeah uh, untap that, my Ar arcane signet yep uh, and that has definitely come up more than a small handful of times right and so I think that part of it is really neat for politicking and um, really kind of stopping other usage. people's wins yeah yeah, yeah. And the, the ultimate aspect of that is that the keys are yeah, in your hand, keys. right? You can decide when you want to untap people's stuff for politicking reasons. Yep. So yeah, those are my four points. I brought four to the table today because I really like this card. I am ready to test it out in almost any deck. It, in my head right now, I'm like, okay, if it runs three of those mana rocks that I'm talking about, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, and Mana Vault, I'm definitely testing this card. And if it runs... Four, including that Grim Monolith, I'm definitely running it as well, right? Yeah. So that's where I'm at with the card. I really want to test it out. I think it's great with any commander that's a big beater as well that runs those mana rocks as well. Um, and yeah, if you like politicking and you like having some, some power in politicking on your board, run this card. All right, y'all. I'm ready for your downsides. Hit me with it. Why is Manifold Key... Not a good card. Why does it deserve to stay in the sideboard? Yeah, hit me with it. I think that this card, uh, which, you know, I'll be honest with you, up until you brought it up, like I hadn't really considered, is a card that I would dub as that's almost a good card for me. Like it mm. does so many of the things I, I would like. But when I started looking at the decks that I could run this in, I just kept finding myself like, what would I cut it for? Right? Like it does a yeah. thing, but like, what does it do? What does, what can I cut for this, the, for this card? And I was having a really hard time kind of finding where I would want to slot it in because at the end of the day, it does what it does well but i don't know if it does enough for me and i think you mentioned this last time like is this card is is a good ish card but like is it good enough right to kind of make that final cut um again for those uh, listeners who don't necessarily play magic but you you find yourself listening to our our voices like commander only has room for about 99 cards in the your deck itself, right? Your commander makes the 100th card. And so where do I slot this in? And you're thinking to yourself like, wow, 99 cards, 100 cards, that's a lot of cards. But at the end of the day, like about 23 to 30 of those cards are lands. And so you only have room for about 69 or 70 other cards. And I find myself going, hmm, what do I cut to make room for this card? I was looking at Kinnon, right? Like, where can I kind of slot this card in? And I kind of had a hard time because, like I said, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to pick on you, but like the few times... Um, I've seen you use this card. Like you definitely are doing things with it, but it also kind of struck me as sometimes spinning your wheels, right? Like you're just kind of like mm. going through motions to try to try to fish. And it was helpful to kind of fish and get you. I think you were definitely doing the loop of tapping the mana crypt to feed into the manifold key to untap the mana crypt to create like three um, colorless mana. And then you were using that mana to, I think, draw you a card through a different a different artifact i can't remember what it was but, mm -hmm. but the, using, i was basically using it as like a mind stone or a thought vessel just correct. it was just a rock it was just a colorless rock at that uh, time yeah and so and it was like it definitely did things it, you were definitely using it a lot but 
I don't think you ended up winning that game. And so, like, I'm kind of left thinking, like, oh, he definitely did a lot. He had a lot of actions that he could do, but it didn't quite move the game towards your window of opportunity uh, a, a lot. Like, I think it's a good value piece, uh, but it never quite opened up that window for you, for you to be able to jump through and go, okay, I'm winning this game right now uh, with the help of this card. Yeah, yeah. I think what I'll rebuke from that statement yeah. is, you know, or I guess... I'll provide an answer more like. Yeah. You ask, what you cut for this, right? And it, it, it's base form, really. It's just a mana rock. Like I said before, it's a it's a mind stone. It's a thought vessel. It's just a colorless mana rock, right? That's going with your soul rings, going with your mana crypt. That's the base, yeah. right? Um, and to be honest, I think that the answer to what you cut for this are the talismans. And this is going to come in hot because <laughs> I have I, a burning <laughs> hatred for the talismans. We've I do not yeah, yeah, like yeah. the talismans. Go off. I don't understand. Even when you're playing four color decks, I get it. You have to find mana filter. I have to get my rocks, right? Just get better with your fetch lands, people. Like, get better with your fetch lands. <laughs> <laughs> play better. Think about what cards you want to play. And then you don't need the talismans. Okay? Take the talismans out of your freaking deck. Oh. Okay? <laughs> okay. And maybe this is bad because, like, I get, uh, like, in Kinnon specifically, like, you want, like, co colored pips. I get that. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Yep, yep, yep. Cool with that. But for, like, regular old four-color good stuff, even three-color decks, like, stop running talismans. You don't need them. Play Manifold Key instead, please. God. <laughs> That's, uh, That's my rebuttal for Kyle's this statement. Kyle's TEDx talk. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, I love that you're... I love you. Hashtag you said, just, hate talismans. Just get better if you at... Find, if you find... Yeah. Drawing fetch <laughs> lands. Continue. Yeah. Uh, just get better. Fetch for the right lands. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. You really got me with that one. Oh, my God. Um, the other downside to it is... I think you mentioned this, is this thing folds. I mean... I guess if you're running that type of deck, this whole thing folds to a collector oof so hard, right? Like, I, I think that oh, that's yeah. like a really big thing. I definitely, in our pod, we definitely see it a little bit more. And like, that's just something I can't gloss over. I, I know it kind of goes without against, saying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Dockside. Our, our pod has, has a lot of mono green, just for the listeners out yeah, there. Yeah, our pod definitely... Uh, tends towards mono green a lot more and you're asking yourself why but they kind of hate love hating themselves like that playing the weakest color in cedh in my opinion but collector oof is a good card right it is uh that card really shuts down i've definitely seen i hate that card pardon my french i fucking hate that card i've seen him that play is my the... least i hate that card so much <laughs> i've seen him literally just drop his head in his hands uh, whenever a collector oof comes out and he's like, well, I'm just going to sit here for a long while until we can remove that collector oof, right? So collector oof is a really big thing that I think decks that have a lot of artifacts in general can get really screwed by. Is that enough of a reason? I, I don't know. It's kind of up to you, but it's definitely something that you have to consider in your meta if you're a deck that runs a lot of mana rocks. Like I play decks where... A collector roof comes out like yeah it sucks but i'm only running like two or three um artifacts out there and i can win without without needing it right and so that's really yeah. nice to kind of like not have to rely on my third point is that I, I think that this card is almost good because it's again really kind of dependent on what kind of color pairing you have because i think the card that really trumps this card is a card uh called manamo Yes, Manamo at Water's Edge. I know. I, I just so. yeah, you pay a blue, blue that untaps. You play it. You, Everyone knows that knows that's broken. Yeah, that oh, yeah. card with the One Ring is the the thing, right? And so it is exactly. It is. It and is if, very good, if and it's Manamo is good. This is slightly worse because you're having to pay two, two, right, to kind well, of do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, Minamo is also a land. I get yes. that. I think Minamo is better, right? But at the same time, I believe Minamo says that you have to untap a legendary permanent, Correct. right? Correct. And like, I, I guess, and that... I'm just saying, manifold key doesn't discriminate. Those are my main points. I actually wanted to end my section with a question for you uh, before you kind of go into your rebuttals. Right, you go. mentioned only mana rocks. Do you happen to have any creatures, artifact creatures, that you think this would work really well with? I actually have an answer here. Artifact creatures that this works really well with. Well, 
the first thing that come <laughs> the things that are coming to mind are uh in my Gandalf deck and there are not CDH staples so no not really <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, yeah like my Koldotha Forge Master is going to be pretty sick with this card so I can sack more <laughs> artifacts and get whatever I want <laughs> like I guess <laughs> but <laughs> no not CDH staple artifact creatures that have a tap ability but if those exist please tell me right now um I you can't run this this one in uh, Gandalf at all but a uh, comedian who is another MTG CEDH, uh, probably the best player uh, for CEDH right now uh, out there. He just put a deck check. Ooh. A deck tech tech deck tech tech deck tech tech deck. Oh no, another animation. Not again. <laughs> For um, uh, a new card that's coming out in the Fallout series. So I knew you probably didn't know, probably weren't following me along as much as I do because I'm a huge nerd like this. Um, there is a card called the Master Transcendent. It is one generic and then blue, black, green. Anyways, um, he is a legendary artifact creature mutant. When the master enters the battlefield, target player gets two rad counters. And then he has a tap ability that says, put target creature card in a graveyard that was milled this turn onto the battlefield under your control. It's a green mutant with base power and toughness 3-3. I was thinking when you uh, gave this card to me and I started doing research like, oh, this is kind of cool, right? You can now yeah. untap the master, which I'm not going to lie. It's kind of a fun card to say, and activate him again for a second time uh, after you've milled your deck or somebody has milled, a, I don't know, or milled a, a card uh, like a Dockside, something like that out. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. This is a deck that I could see myself putting the Manifold Key into. Yeah, like you said, this is awesome for this this deck so not only is because it's in solta i think that this deck will probably run mana vault for sure just because in green you're probably gonna have some big old, bigger green creatures that you'll want to play just i'm just throwing it out there obviously i haven't deck teched for this this new card yet no. but uh, i think it's safe to assume that you're gonna play mana vault in this at least probably not grim monolith but you never know um so i, I can see a lot of value in this deck for sure so, yeah, let's talk about what point I made that really convinced you um, the most. So what is the best point that I made that says, hey, you know, Manifold Key, that's a good card. The point I liked the most was about the Pollock taking, right? Like I said, like, um, Ooh, it's, I, like I, spicy really do, I do really like your spicy take there. I think there is a lot of value in being able to convince people like, look, don't kill me right now. Or, hey, I can untap that to help you win the game or help us not lose the game uh but you got to promise to like not do this or that right like it's it's, it's a great tool for that yeah. and uh the one ring right that 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 point right there is a really great tool right to be able to untap and get another activation yeah. with the one ring is rather huge uh being able to do it twice that's mind-boggling that's that that's just almost yeah. too good yeah yeah. Hey, if Manamo's good, then Manifold Key is good. You heard it here. Sign it off. Stamp it. Send it out. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> cool. Uh, I just wanted to point out, you know, what you said of why this is good. I think, <laughs> well, my heart is telling me that you know, the best point that you made was that this gets shut down by Collector Oof because I hate that guy's stupid little face. <laughs> but, <laughs> and I can say that, you know, as a ginger, you know. <laughs> I kind of look like Collector Roof, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You've, I've never thought that. <laughs> I kind of look a little bit like Collector Roof, you know, oh red beard, gosh. just an, an angry, spiteful little face, you know, a little leprechaun-y. He, he could be my brother, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I think that the point that you made the best is if I'm so heavily invested in artifacts, right, it, it's going to be sink or swim when it comes to artifact hate. Yeah. Notably, we didn't really talk about it, but a more common artifact hate that gets slowed down by this is blind obedience, right? Yeah. Um, so you don't get that automatic uh, positive effect when it enters tapped right away. You do have to wait that whole round of, you know, that whole round to be able to use it, which you know, blind obedience is so good right now and is being played in so many different decks is just, it, it's something to consider that, hey, this could be hit by artifacts a lot. And yeah, uh, does it help get you your win con? I actually, you know, do think that it does just through the one ring itself, like by doubling probably the best card in your deck, you're probably giving yourself a good chance to win. So, so yeah, yeah. Did I convince you today that manifold key is a good card? If so, say the thing.
I think that Manifold Key is almost a good card. That's almost a good card for me. I, I still feel oh. it. I'm going to test it out. I, I promise you I'm going to test it out. I will probably try to slot it into okay. Kinnon somewhere, and then maybe we can revisit. But it is almost there for me. Almost a good card. Okay. I got half credit. That's yep. fine. It's a it's a pity credit. You know what? <laughs> I will just go ahead in the next couple of games. I'll beat you and destroy you with Manifold Key. And only then, while you're scooping up your cards, will you say that's a good card. I will record <laughs> it, and we can slot it in at the end of this episode. <laughs> All right, listeners. Uh, so it is time for our not-so-new segment, but you know, critically acclaimed top hit segment that everybody absolutely loves, which is... That's a good card, question mark? So our that's a good card, question mark segment is a fun little segment we do where I will be providing the name of an obscure card to Yaw, just the name. And with that, Yaw will use his imagination and hopefully come up with the card. Now, he might not get there along the way and his card may Probably be completely not. broken or completely off. But you know what? That's part of the fun journey. So, yeah, are you ready for your card today? Yes, I am. And listeners, if you are also interested in playing, don't be afraid to pause after Kyle gives you the name and try to make your guesses and see how close you and I get towards fi- figuring out what this card actually does. I agree. I agree. All right, y'all. Are you ready? Yep. Your card for today is Dragon engine oh wow dragon engine uh that sounds like an artifact card to me um uh, it sounds like it's Ooh, a red okay. card um i don't okay make- <laughs> yeah why do you think it's red uh just because dragons right dragons breathe fire dragons are red they fair are fair enough right fair uh, enough uh, okay i don't know why i now just described a red artifact card but those exist <laughs> So I'm going to go with it. <laughs> I was thinking uh, the same thing. Cursed Mirror, right? That's a Cursed red Mirror. Yeah, card. that's a, that's a red artifact card for sure. Uh, and I believe that it's going to be, it's, I, I think it's kind of pricey. Uh, I think it's going to be okay. like yeah. What's five generic and a red. Oh, nice. Right? Five generic nice. and a oh, red. S- okay. Five generic and a red. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a red card. It's a red card. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> and it is going to be like pay four tap it pay four pay four okay four colorless yeah four colorless tap it okay and nice. then yep. make yeah. okay. a create a like four four flying red dragon creature oh token. because it's an engine it's that's an engine. sick it's an engine that's what that's i'm sick Does that's it... what i'm i'm saying it is all right hit me with the flavor text for that card roar goes <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Last week I did. I thought it was just sorry. I cut you off with my laughs. I thought it was just gonna be roar. I I think that that's what it should be. <laughs> okay, the that's the just flavor text. Roar. roar. <laughs> All right, okay, y'all. Dude. That was an awesome, awesome guess. Um, I don't would think you like I'm... to hear what <laughs> yeah, Dragon please, Engine me... actually is? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you were you got well, you got <laughs> one thing right. <laughs> and that it's an artifact yes but it's not only an artifact but it's also an artifact creature of course yeah so dragon engine is a three cmc just three colorless it is a colorless card not red so a three C- cmc uh creature it's an artifact creature that says you may activate it for two colorless and if you activate it for two colorless it gets plus one plus zero until the end of turn my and it is a one three creature. Yeah, this card, card is trash. This card, uh, <laughs> this card is good and limited. I'll put it up on the screen limited. right now, but it's it's yeah. it's a one three for three. Whoa, it's got gone... plus one plus zero. Oh, dude, there are a lot of <laughs> for two I, mana. There are a lot, a lot of, of printings of this printings card. Of this yeah. card, the original art is printings, awesome. Yeah. It is sweet, yeah. It's like this big, like, golden dragon machine. So I think thematically I'll give you a, a, a an internet point because you did describe it, like, as an artifact, and I think that that's how it really looks is it does look like yeah. this big dragon engine. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it's almost like the name of the card is Dragon Engine. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, you know, awesome job, y'all. I really liked it. I'll have fun, that was uh, fun. creating the... Uh, Kyle's artwork for Dragon Engine, <laughs> Kyle's version, <laughs> and throw it up on the screen for y'all to look at. Uh, please let us know if there is any CEDH decks that you would put Yaw's version of Dragon Engine in. 
All right. Thanks, listeners, for listening today. Please check us out on Spotify. We are also on YouTube, and we also have a Twitter account slash X account at That's a Good Card. Also, check the comments below for our Discord. Yeah, join the Discord. Uh, come play games. Come learn more about magic. Meet some people. Uh, and if you want to see a t-shirt with Kyle's very own artwork of our cards, uh, oh, no. like and subscribe <laughs> so we can no. grow this community. And uh, maybe one day we can do that uh, in limited batches. One of a kind oh, Kyle my God. artwork. My MS Paint artwork. Okay, <laughs> love it. Well, thank you all again. Thanks. And see you next time. Bye.